Hello, 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 friend. So glad that you're here and so excited that you're interested in diving into mindfulness. So I think that, first off, the reason why I wanted to create this episode is not only do I feel that mindfulness is super powerful in general, but also I have had a lot of my own personal experiences with mindfulness and it is something that has become a daily practice for me. Like I genuinely feel like mindfulness has changed my life and is just a way of living now. And due to the positive effects that it's had on my mental health, on, you know, the anxiety that I struggle with, on my challenges with focus and attention and things like that. And then as well, in just all the science behind it and how I integrate it into my work with clients as well. It is something that is so, so important to me. And I really wanted to demystify it. I really feel like people think that it's super complex. And of course it can be. And I think the practice of it can feel kind of complicated and just honestly kind of difficult. But I really just wanted to share this information with you because I feel like we can make it more simple. I just, and that's, that's something that I'm so passionate about in general, right? Is taking these concepts, these incredible practices, this incredible wisdom that we have because of the time that we live in, these things that are, you know, evidence-based, but there's so much science behind these things, but like, how do we actually do it? Like, how do I actually live this out? What does this actually look like in my daily life? Something that I'm so passionate about sharing with you is exactly that. Like, how do we actually do this? So in today's episode, I'm going to be talking with you about what mindfulness is, why the heck we should care, why it matters, and then simple ways that you can start practicing it today. Okay, so I'm going to start with a couple different definitions of what mindfulness actually is. So John Kabat-Zinn um, is a huge, huge, incredible name in mindfulness and mindfulness-based stress reduction. There's just so much that he's done in this field. So his definition of mindfulness, and I'm going to say it twice, nice and slow, his, his definition of mindfulness is Awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non judgmentally. I'll say it again. Mindfulness is awareness that arises through paying attention, number one, on purpose in the present moment, non judgmentally. So, mindfulness is the awareness that comes through paying attention in a very intentional way. You're paying attention on purpose, you're paying attention in the present moment, you're paying attention non judgmentally. So, he's saying that that's what mindfulness is. Dr. Shauna Shapiro, um, I'm currently listening to her audiobook, Good Morning, I Love You, which is about mindfulness and self compassion. Highly recommend. I will link it below. Um, And her definition or what she says about mindfulness is mindfulness is more than just moment to moment awareness. It's a kind, curious awareness that helps us relate to ourselves and others with compassion. And when she talks about mindfulness in her book, she really uses these three different pieces. She talks about mindfulness being an intention where you're focusing your attention, and then the attitude that you're having in that moment about what you're experiencing. So it's the intention, attention, and attitude. So again, I will link her book below. It's fantastic. I will link another audiobook that I listened to. It's super. The other one is much longer, but is a super, just if you really want to dig into like the science and um, just really, really dig in, but Good Morning, I Love You by Dr. Sean Shapiro is a much kind of easier, lighter listen, but so much practical knowledge in there. So much that you can really implement and learn. Um, the other one that I'll link below is much more of like the science. It's kind of a heftier, more intense read. So highly recommend. So if we had to then think about like what actually is mindfulness, right? It's it's paying attention. Like it's intentionally paying attention in the moment with kindness or with compassion or with non-judgment. So it's noticing what we're experiencing and just paying attention to that with a kind, compassionate attitude. That's really what mindfulness is. 
And so what's really interesting to think about and why mindfulness has been so life-changing for me is just kind of on a personal note, like I have struggled with anxiety. I struggle with like, you know, focus and (laughs) just paying attention to things for a long period of time. Um, I have a lot of Just like my mental, my inner world is very active. And so with that, it can be kind of stressful. Like it can be (laughs) kind of stressful. So with practicing mindfulness, what that looks like for me in my life is literally, it's just a way of approaching each moment. It's a kind, compassionate paying attention in each moment. And that could look like a lot of different ways that I do that. And I'll share with you some of the practices that I use. But that's what mindfulness looks like to me is that constantly throughout my day, I'm bringing myself back into this moment. So I'm pulling myself out of, you know, like just letting my thoughts, like instead of being up in my head and engaging a lot in the thoughts that I'm having or the judgments or thoughts that I'm having about what I'm experiencing, what I'm going through, no matter what it is, right? No matter what it is that I'm doing, practicing mindfulness means that I'm bringing myself into awareness of that moment and bring myself out of my head a little bit and just noticing the moment for what it is, paying attention to it intentionally with a compassionate attitude. That's what that looks like for me. And so it could be when you're doing the dishes, it could be you're meeting with a client and it's just bringing yourself into that moment to really be in that moment compassionately. And like, it's just a complete game changer as we improve our skills in this. And I want to say as well that it is a practice. It's a mindfulness practice. It's not something that you're going to do one time and feel super adequate at and you're done. I really feel like it's a way of life. It's an approach to life it's a practice. It's just like a faith journey. It's just like your well-being journey. It's something that you are growing in and cultivating and practicing. And it really is a lens through which we see the world and through which we experience our life, which is so, so powerful. So, okay, we have simplified the definition. We have talked about what it actually is. And then what I'm going to do now is share with you some of the science behind it. Okay, so some of the science behind it. And if you're not into research, just skip fast forward a little bit if you're not into this. But for me, I really am like, I I just, I'm like a super nerd when it comes to this stuff. I love hearing about like, what are the actual benefits of these practices and that's something that I'm so passionate about sharing with you on here is what are these pra- what are these practices that are genuinely like have been researched and we know are so beneficial, right? Of course, I'm also going to share things with you that have been just helpful to me or, you know, maybe a little more anecdotal that aren't research and evidence based and it's a blend of those things. But I do love so much, there is so much power in the research that we have and in these practices. So let's share some science behind mindfulness. Okay, so I'm linking a couple different articles below that if you want to really dig in and read more about these, please do. Like I'm literally just taking tiny little clips from these articles. So if you want to learn more, head down to the show notes. Links will be down there, okay? So... Um, ways that mindfulness helps or just, you know, positive. So there's lots of research on mindfulness, really supporting people and protecting themselves from burnout benefits in the workplace, people feeling less stress, less anxiety benefits with focus and intention and creativity. So, so incredible. Some studies have found a reduction in anxiety and depression, an improvement in immune function. Okay, let me go to this other article now. So that was from mindful.org, an incredible resource for information and tools all related to this. Okay, now I'm on to the positive psychology article, which shows that there are studies that suggest that mindfulness positively impacts human functioning. It can help improve the quality of attention. It can impact interpersonal behaviors. So that means 
our relationships. It can provide greater empathy and compassion. It can help improve cognition, right? Like how our brain functions, our emotions, our physiology, and even our behavior. So many benefits. So many benefits to these practices. And again, I will link below at just saying like how, what are some tools to get started and some amazing resources that will be helpful for you as you kind of dive in a little bit more. But it's just so amazing to know there is so much science. There is so much science that talks about the benefits of this. And like think about if you have ever practiced mindfulness or meditation or something like that, like reflecting on how that experience was for you. And I will be super honest, like it can feel difficult. Like it can feel super difficult if you hang out in your head a lot, if you, right, if you're anything like me, if you hang out in your head a lot, if you struggle with anxiety or, you know, like attention struggles. And I would, I honestly feel, even if you don't struggle with those things, even if you are just a human in the modern world that we live in, right? Like we have busy lives and our attention is always being pulled in 5 million directions. Always. Like, And so often we are engaging in practices where (laughs) we are reducing our attention span all the time, right? So think about like how much time you spend on Instagram Reels or on TikTok if you're on social media. And it's like we are training our brains to have shorter attention spans. It's like what are – I don't even know what they're saying these days, but it's like it's less than 10 seconds. Like the attention span of (laughs) – people. And so when we think about that, like when we think about the goals that you have, the vision that you have, the the calling that you feel God is calling you to in your life, if we don't have practices like mindfulness that help us have greater attention span, that help us focus, that help us be in the moment, And we are just living by, you know, the way that our culture lives, which is constantly on social media, always being entertained, always consuming content, like just going, going, going all the time. How, and I ask you this from a place of love because I've asked myself this question, how am I supposed to follow through on anything? How am I supposed to have the focus, the capability, the mental ability, the mental strength (laughs) to create to write, to create these tools, to create the merch that I'm creating, to, you know, like be fully present with clients, to do this work that I know I'm here to do. Like we have to be so intentional about creating lifestyles full of practices, not full of practices, but that include practices that allow us to really build our mental strength, our mental ability to focus, to be present. Like, it's just so, so necessary because our culture is just constantly, you know, doing things that really are, if I'm being super honest, that really are negatively impacting our mental health and that are negatively impacting our ability to focus. And like, when we think about that, it's right, like there are changes that are happening physiologically in our brains, in our brains. The more time we spend on social media, right? Like the shorter our attention spans become, all these things, like the practices that we engage in on a daily basis are impacting, you know, like how our brain functions, um, what our brain, like the structure of our brain, which then impacts our ability to, like I said, to create, to follow through, to focus. And again, I say this from a place of love. I say this from a place of I <laughs> I struggle with this as well. And that's why this is something that I'm studying, that I'm digging into, that I'm planning on taking. I'm planning on doing an amazing experiential program that is really going to guide me through um, just improving the mindfulness and self-compassion that I experience in my life so that I can also share it with you and share it with my clients and it's just so important. It's so important, right? And if we look at like how, sorry, this is kind of a tangent, but if we look at if we look at the activities that we did as children, 
and what that looked like, even the activities that our parents did as children, and then look at, you know, our young ones and what, right? Like if we think about the practices that we're doing on a daily basis, how much we need to be entertained all the time, like look at the differences there, right? And we have to, have to, have to intentionally create space in our lives where we are not being entertained, where we are learning. I don't know where I heard this, but it was such a wild concept of like just learning to be okay being bored. What? What? If anyone knows where that's from, please let me know. But it was just this concept of learning to be okay with being bored and like how are like I have a hard time with that I'm saying all this from like (laughs) like I'm experiencing it too but it's like I you know we automatically pick up our phone we automatically you know and thinking about our kids too and it's like as we're doing that like it genuinely is it's impacting our brains and the structures of our brains which thus is impacting our ability to focus to create to sustain focus to you know like how we handle our inner thoughts and how we our internal dialogue and like there's just so many pieces to that so that was a fun longer than I expected tangent about why this is so important to me so thanks for going along on that ride with me but this is all stuff that I've been experiencing in my own life something that I've really been integrating for myself and again that's why I'm here sharing it with you so Wanted to share that. Thanks for going on that ride with me. And yes, so I wanted to share a little bit about like why, what this has looked like in my own personal life. And then I'm going to share with you uh, simple ways that you can start practicing it today for yourself. And I've already shared a couple, I think, (laughs) just kind of in conversation. But let me share with you a little bit about just my own personal experiences with practicing mindfulness. So Again, I will share with you in just a minute simple ways to practice what that looks like for me and then also some resources for you that you can dig into. So my own experiences and why I find this so, so important. So like I said, I really have a hard time with focus and sustaining attention on things. And so practicing mindfulness has really, really helped me. And there is science behind the fact that people who meditate and people who practice mindfulness have a different brain structure than those who do not. And so what's incredible is that the more that you practice mindfulness or meditation, which really is training your brain on what to pay attention to, on how to pay attention to things, on your reaction to thoughts that come up. So imagine if you're spending five to 10 minutes a day on, let's say you're doing a meditation of some kind where you're noticing your thoughts, you're doing a visualization, maybe you're doing a progressive muscle relaxation or a body scan, all of these, there are so many types of meditation, Um, but any of those things, right? Say that you're doing that for five to 10 minutes a day, just practicing noticing your thoughts, or letting your thoughts go by and not entertaining them and refocusing on whatever it is that you're doing, refocusing on the breath, refocusing on the plants around you or the sounds around you or your sensory experience. If you're doing that every day, imagine then that when you get to projects like creating content or you know creating this amazing tool for some of your clients or for your business, whatever that looks like, Imagine how much more equipped and able you'll be to maintain focus on that, right? If you're already building those skills, not only building those skills, but also like literally changing the focus of your brain to make it easier and to allow you to be more able, like literally more able to focus and things like that. So I've experienced that in my own life. I will also say another benefit that I've really experienced and really enjoyed is just that quiet time. Like um, with, like I'm super creative, super multi-passionate, if you cannot tell. And so it's so important. Like I crave, crave the time in the morning when I meditate now. And now, don't hate me for this, okay? But I actually get up and leave my dogs in their crates that they sleep in for a little bit so that I can meditate and it is actually purely quiet. I used to let my dogs out first 
and try to meditate. And it was, it was honestly just too much. Like I'm kind of sensitive to sensory stuff as well. And so it's like, I just need that quiet. And I have come to crave that time. Even if it's, you know, I don't meditate for like an hour in the morning. I literally will go on, um, there's a couple different apps I'll use, either Insight Timer or Aura, 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 I don't know how you say it. It's A-U-R-A. Those are the apps that I use right now. And I choose one that's, you know, maybe 10 minutes. Sometimes it's only five. Sometimes it's 10. Sometimes it's 12. Literally, that's the max that I do. I don't really do more than that. And... I crave that time where I know my mind is going to get a break because it's guiding me in focusing on my breath. I'm not having all these thoughts. I'm not like I'm not focusing on what I'm going to do later on my to-do list. I'm genuinely in the moment focusing on whatever it is that that meditation is guiding me in and I crave that mental calm often. And so that's something I'm intentionally trying to practice more of. That is a current intention that I have is to meditate twice a day, uh, which is, yeah, just something that I'm working on personally. So really enjoy that quiet time. Another benefit that I've really enjoyed and experienced is, like I said, I um, have struggled with anxiety. That's been a journey that I've been on. And so in my journey of like healing anxiety and learning just to, to lessen that and reduce that in my own life, mindfulness has been super helpful, like super, super helpful because what happens, so this is on a different level. So one of the ways that I think about anxiety, and again, I'm not talking, I mean, you could be talking about diagnosable anxiety, but also I'm just talking about like the anxiety of living life. Like we just live in a stressful time, right? There's so much to do, so much going on. Anyway, you know that life, you, kn- you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to describe it. So with that, even just normal anxieties that come up in life. You're going to have a difficult conversation. You have a first day at a new job. You have a new client. You have a whatever it is. Normal anxieties and stresses of life. So what happens is in our brain, our fight-flight response is being activated, right? When we're feeling anxious or stressed. I'm not going to go super into that, but when your fight-flight response is activated, we need to like soothe that part of our brain and reactivate these other parts of our brain that allow for us to problem solve and think rationally and, you know, look into the future and see possibilities and see solutions and um, even just to see creativity and to better connect with people. Like when we are in fight or flight, we are not most effectively able to do any of those things I just mentioned. Literally, your body and your brain are like trying to survive, right? Like think about the last time that you had a difficult conversation or like I said, maybe you have a new client call or something and like the five minutes before the call, right? What, what's going on in your mind or in your body? Like for me, it's like sweating, racing thoughts, my stomach hurts, like my anxiety always goes to my stomach, like stomach aches. Right, so your body is literally shutting down <laughs> processes in your body that are needed for like long term living and life because it's just as focused on maybe we need to like go fight a bear or a you know a mountain lion or like survival. That is all it is focused on is survival. So, with that. When we are trying to soothe or reduce our anxiety or stress in any given moment, practicing mindfulness, taking deep breaths, practicing a meditation can be super, super helpful. And this is only one tool related to anxiety because sometimes people, if you're in that moment, um, and I've seen this before and I've experienced this before, where if you're in a moment of stress, often we also do need to move our bodies and get that energy out, right? We need to expel that energy. And so sometimes meditation can be really helpful. Taking some deep breaths, practicing mindfulness can bring us out of our head and into the moment Um, focusing on our breath, letting the thoughts go by rather than entertaining them. So that's another way that I've really, really benefited from practicing mindfulness is just in learning how to interact with my thoughts and really just on a more physical level, on that physical level of 
taking deep breaths, paying attention to my body, um, doing a body scan, paying attention to what's going on around me, practicing grounding techniques of like, what am I seeing? What am I hearing? Getting into my senses, being mindful in the moment. All of those things are really, really helpful for anxiety and stress. So that has been super helpful for me. And the last thing that I will say, the last benefit that I have felt, and then I will share with you some simple ways that you can practice this, would be that having an approach to life, just a mindful approach to life. So if having a mindful approach to life is paying attention intentionally with compassion, with kindness, if that is your approach to life, right? Like how we interact in the world might be different. How we interact with ourselves might be different. And so for me, another huge benefit that I've experienced is that it's really allowed me to be a really gentle observer of my thoughts, of my experience, because really mindfulness has looked like just being super aware and compassionate of what I'm experiencing, whether that's internally or externally, but just being really an intentional observer with compassion. And so as I've been able to grow that awareness, that's really impacted like how I talk to myself, what knowing how I'm feeling, knowing what I'm needing, like growing my self-awareness, things like that. And so that's been a huge benefit that I've noticed as well, is just allowing myself to be a kind observer of what I'm experiencing and just being more engaged, like just being more engaged in my life and my daily life. And again, I am not perfect, 100% not perfect, but these are just some benefits that I have noticed. So let's share some simple ways that you can start practicing mindfulness. So ones that I've already mentioned before are, I mentioned Insight Timer is an app. I really enjoy the Aura app, which is A-U-R-A, and really enjoy that. And with that one, you can actually choose different background music, which I really enjoy. I really enjoy having like nature sounds in the background. So those are some apps that you can try. Um, another super simple way that you could do this is just scheduling in times to take a couple deep breaths throughout your day. So literally could be as simple as you set an alarm and you have two alarms in your phone and when each alarm goes off, you take three deep breaths. And what that could look like is you place your hands on your heart. You could place one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. And you're taking slow breaths. So inhaling for four, holding for four, and then exhaling. You can either exhale for four or you can exhale for six. I like doing a, a much slower exhale, but so inhaling for four, holding for four, exhaling for four, okay? So those are things, that's just a super simple practice that you can use, super simple, setting that alarm on your phone. Another one is that throughout the day, what you can do is tune into your senses. So set the intention at the beginning of your day, okay, I'm gonna be tuning into um, what I'm feeling like on my skin or even just try it once just try it once maybe you're going for a walk maybe you're sitting outside doing something whatever that looks like but just tuning into what am I feeling around me what do I hear around me what am I smelling around me tuning in to your senses and then reflect afterwards on how that felt but again, it can be super helpful in the beginning to have guided meditation. So you can go on YouTube, try the apps that I mentioned. It can just be really helpful to have like guided meditations. There's also Headspace is a super good app. I haven't used it, but I've heard really good things about it. Calm is obviously a really well-known app that's really helpful. 
Hey love, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're looking for any of those articles or any resources mentioned, head below down to the show notes. And then also I would so, so appreciate it if you would either share this with a friend or leave a rating and a review below. If you're looking for ways to support the show, those are the best ways to do that is to send this to a friend, hit that little button below or leave a rating and a review. It would mean so, so much to me. And if you have any questions or want to chat about this more with me, definitely feel free to send me an email or send me um, a message on Instagram. I'm not on Instagram too, too much, but I do check it a few times a week. So I hope this served you. I hope that you found this so useful and I will talk to you soon.